Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at an Esper or Obscura Ascendancy deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring a 3 mana rare enchantment from Streets of New Capenna, saying whenever we cast a spell, if its mana value is equal to 1 plus the number of soul counters on Ascendancy, put a soul counter on it and then create a 2 2 white spirit creature token with flying. And as long as there are 5 or more soul counters on Ascendancy, spirits we control get plus 3 plus 3, all of a sudden turning into 5 5 flyers, which can often end the game on the spot. So the payoff for Ascendancy is quite significant, as 2 2 flyers quickly add up, and if we ever get to 5 or more counters, the game is usually over. But getting there requires jumping through quite a few hoops, and sometimes we have to sequence our spells in an unintuitive or awkward way, giving up some value along the way to eventually get that payoff from Ascendancy. So taking a look at the rest of our deck, of course we need a ton of 1-drops to enable Ascendancy to get that first counter going, and then we want to cast a 2-drop, a 3-drop, a 4-drop, and eventually a 5-drop to end the game. So at 1 mana we've got some cheap card draw with Consider, we'll often hold this until after we play Ascendancy to enable it and get our first counter on it. Let's us also put cards in our graveyard, which can be advantageous with cards that have Disturb or Flashback that can still be replayed out of our graveyard. Gaze is an instant that lets us take a look at the top 3 cards of our library, putting any number of them into our graveyard, and the rest can be put on top in any order. It's also very helpful in finding Ascendancy in the early turns, so if we cast this on turn 1 or 2, find Ascendancy, then we can still flash it back, and despite Flashback costing 2 mana, it will still count as a 1 mana card to get our first counter on Ascendancy. So unlike Consider, we don't really feel bad casting Gaze in the early turns. And then we also have the full sand of Thirst, which can take out a creature, maybe even a Planeswalker, especially if we kick it for 2 and a black, although despite Kicker costing a total of 4 mana, it will still count as a 1 mana card for Ascendancy. And then one of the X spells that we often cast for X equals 0 is a March of Otherworldly Light to take out an opposing creature land or maybe a token, so we can still take those out for X equals 0, and then Light will count as a 1 mana card for Ascendancy, but of course these X spells are also quite flexible and will be very instrumental in enabling our Ascendancy to eventually get it to 5 counters. Then at 2 mana we've got the full set of Professor of Symbology, which lets us learn when it enters a battlefield, and learning means we can grab one of our 7 sideboard lessons and best of 1, and lessons are very useful for enabling Ascendancy as well, as we can potentially play Ascendancy, play a 1-drop to enable it, play Professor, and then Professor can find any number of mana values to help fill out the gaps that we still have, so we can potentially find Environmental Sciences as a 2-drop to find a land, gain some life, we've got a whole host of 3-drops with Reduce to Memory as removal, and then either Teachings or Introduction to Prophecy as card draw in case the opponents may be empty-handed and we cannot cast Teachings. Then in terms of 4-drops, there's no Lessons at 4 mana, but we can always cast a Fractal Summoning for X equals 2, which is not a great play, but if it enables Ascendancy it may be worth it, and then Fractal Summoning also scales nicely into the late game to maybe fill out any gaps we still have. Then we can also cast Introduction to Annihilation at 5 mana as removal, and then Mascot Exhibition can maybe search it up if we don't have our Ascendancy going, just to find something else to help end the game. Then we have two copies of Danik, a fine card at 2 mana, can also be disturbed in the form of Pious Apparition, and then despite costing 4 mana will still count as a 2 mana card for Ascendancy purposes, and the Pious Apparition can provide a nice bit of card advantage in the form of Clue Tokens, also synergizes with milling creatures, either with Gaze or Consider, and also plays well with our removal that kills instead of exiles, with Thirst, Meat Hook Massacre and March of Wretched Sorrow, all providing Clue Tokens. And then we've got Vanishing Verse as another versatile removal spell that exiles. Then at 3 mana we're mostly relying on our sideboard lessons, but can of course also play one of our X spells, or maybe play a second Ascendancy to enable the first one. And then we've got a whole host of X spells to fill out any gaps where necessary. We've got our White March to exile creatures, artifacts or enchantments, and March of Wretched Sorrow to deal damage to creature or planeswalkers. Can also maybe pitch some cards in our hand to help pay for these. And then the Meat Hook Massacre as a nice board wipe. Can also be cast just for X equals 0 to get it in play, start draining the opponent as they kill our spirit tokens. And if we cast this for X equals 3, it will maybe get our fifth counter on Ascendancy, but before giving every creature minus 3 minus 3, Three will get that bonus, so our spirits will still survive, so that can also be a nice way to end the game. 
And then one of the most important cards in the deck is a multiple choice as another X spell. Don't really want to cast it for X equals zero because then it doesn't do anything besides enabling ascendancy. But for X equals one, we get a nice cantrip. For X equals two, if the opponent has to pick up one of their creatures, X equals three will make a four four elemental. And X equals four or more, we get to do all of the above. So that's the mode we're most interested in. So this will be our five drop of choice to enable ascendancy to get that final counter but of course can fill out any gaps where necessary. And then our mana base, we've got our Rafine's Tower, two of each of the Innistrad dual lands, and then all 12 pathways, and one of each basic to search up with environmental sciences, or in case the opponent uses a card like Field of Ruin, and then a single copy of Hive of the Eye Tyrant as an extra threat in the form of a creature land. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a Keepable Hand. Professor can get sciences for an extra land, and then Ascendancy has a 1, 2, potentially 3. Professor can also get a 3. Okay. So how do we feel here? Kind of liking teachings to an extent. Next turn drop Ascendancy, then maybe go Thirst Professor. And then teachings will be a nice three. Could have also gotten prophecy if we don't think we'll find a target for thirst early on. Which may very well be the case. Hope this resolves. Opponent with a magma opus in response, making a treasure. Maybe an Arcane Bombardment deck. Iteration for card draw. Alright, at least Teachings is more likely to give us the extra card. But uh, still don't have a great target for Thirst, as I'm not looking to kill my own Professor. Although it is an option. And if our opponent's kind of a blue-red control deck, they may not present any targets for Thirst for quite some time. So sure, I guess uh, we will do this just to get our spirits and get our ascendancy going. And play another Professor. And then Teachings will be our three. We've got a couple X spells for four and five potentially. Although, Fractal Summoning is still maybe the most flexible card, in case the opponent doesn't present any targets for removal, we can still play this as our 4-drop. Opponent may be able to wipe the board here. That's gonna be a Soaring City to bounce Ascendancy back. That's annoying. So it's going to be pretty hard to get that started again. So do we attempt to do so anyway? Alternative teachings just to draw to. Keep it going. Hmm. I guess we will go for Ascendancy again. And then I can always march for X equals zero just to make a spirit. Massacre for X equals zero, just to drain the opponent if they wipe the board, also reasonable. Although they may wipe the board right now with their own Massacre. So in that case, I won't have any targets for March. So I won't be able to make my Spirit, but if I cast it now, then of course the Spirit also dies. Okay, March for zero can exile their uh, treasure token at least. And then we can play our own Meat Hook Massacre. Move to our second main phase. Opponent considers. And then X equals zero, trigger Ascendancy, and still have our teachings. Okay, well, we got it going again. 
after it getting bounced, which is quite the challenge. But I guess it shows the flexibility of all our X casting cost cards. Strangle kills one of them. Massacres will cancel each other out. Another Ascendancy, that can be my three. Or we can go for Teachings. Although double Ascendancy sounds kind of fun, in case the game goes long. And then I can march for one, or x equals zero if I really want to. Although I'll probably go for Teachings and then Ideally, pick up some cheap card draw spell like Consider. Can attack first. And the opponent's kind of powerless to all these flyers. So, go for Teachings. Draw two. Doesn't trigger Ascendancy, but hopefully finds a one drop we can play to get the second Ascendancy going. Thirsts, well, that would kill my own token. So I think we just pass. Could cast summoning for X equals 2 to get this up to 4 counters. Alright, opponent's gonna wipe the board. That works. Yeah, really need some targets for removal. And then we can get these going pretty easily. For now, I guess summoning for X equals 2. Make a spirit and a 2-2 two -two fractal. And then march for X equals 4. Can eventually uh, grow our spirits as well, so can actually cast this pitching Blood Chief's Thirst if needed. And then we'll give our spirits three additional power and toughness. Still not enough to survive Burn Down the House. And there's another one. So do I even bother casting March? I don't think so. Vanishing Verse can deal with their Massacre, but want to wait to Thirst first. Just need them to play a creature. Or a Planeswalker. Otherwise we'll need to find one of our one mana cantrips, either Gaze or Consider. Opponent just holding a Fistful of Removal, I'm sure. There we go, Consider. Do I want to go for it now, or do we go for it end of turn? Kind of like the end of turn. And then we can trigger Ascendancy twice, maybe get rid of the Meat Hook Massacre. Although at this point they likely have a second copy in hand. Iteration, more card draw. Their opponent with a full grip. But yeah, Grixis Colors don't tend to have a ton of answers to enchantments. So, exile that. And then if I march my own token, opponent with a negate, that's fine. So if I march for X equals 4, I would deal 4 damage to my spirit, but before it takes damage it would get the 3 additional toughness, so it doesn't die. And then all our spirits will get bigger to hopefully kill the opponent here. And I'll have 3 five, 5 spirits attacking. Ultimate 
all in the opponent's end step. And yeah, that does it. Awesome. So managed to build up our ascendancy all the way after it getting bounced, and we were close to getting a second online onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand isn't the best, but it's got functional mana and a lot of card draw. So hopefully we'll be able to find an ascendancy soon. Another professor. So we'll run one out and learn for either teachings or prophecy. I'll go with teachings. Especially on the play, we're pretty likely to draw at least two with it. Opponent passes. Attack for two. And then find drawing two. Okay. Still on the hunt for ascendancy. But multiple choice can also be cast for x equals one, just as a cantrip. Although we can maybe just get there with multiple choice x equals four. And uh, a not rely on ascendancy to get there. Opponent ramping. March. Okay, so... Get multiple choice for one. Just for the card draw effects. Could multiple choice for three to make a 4-4 four, four token. Which, you know, may or may not be good enough. Or we can save both for x equals four to get the full value, and then for now maybe play like a professor, although then we may be light on two drops to enable ascendancy if we find it. Definitely want to hang on to consider. So I guess we'll give x equals one a shot, and then we can play a tap land. Denik's not bad actually. Maybe I take Denik. Hmm, it's no ascendancy though, but I feel like we'll get some good value out of Denik in this matchup. So right now I wouldn't be able to multiple choice for x equals 4 next turn. But maybe our opponent will present a target for March. Binding kills Denik, so now we can just disturb it, play tap land, and be on our way. Seems fine. Alright, so just kind of playing a value game here with some nice two-for-ones. Opponent ramping, so they may have Thibault slash Valky in their deck to ramp towards. Burn down the house, wipes the board. That's too bad. And then now... What do we want to do? Don't really want a multiple choice when there's no creature to bounce. So it could go for Professor... And then get another card draw effect. Sure. So we'll probably go for Prophecy now. Or we can go Mascot Exhibition, which we can cast next turn. Against the Junts. I mean, our opponent's gonna have a few more sweepers. Still kinda like getting Ascendancy going, but on the other hand, opponent's also playing Binding. So they have clean answers to Ascendancy too. So maybe I should just ignore it and go with uh, Mascot Exhibition, and then we keep Tower in hand to maybe cycle, could be fine, since we already have land 7. So I may have to give up on the Ascendancy Dream and fire off this Consider. Ooh, Waking the Trolls, not what we wanted to see. So that kills a land, so no Exhibition next turn. Can still cycle Tower. Vanishing verse, okay. So if I want to march to the Waking the Trolls, that's also going to take my entire turn. Gaze the draw. So, yeah, maybe hang on to multiple choice to bounce a troll eventually. And then... Yeah, hope they don't have more Waking the Trolls. We're also kind of light on basic land, so this Rampage could also turn into a Stone Rain. 
So I'll gaze for now. There's Ascendancy. Okay, and then March, consider in the graveyard. Unless, I guess we can consider draw Ascendancy to get it in play now. And then I can flash back Gaze, so then I don't need another Consider. That should work. So Consider now. Grab the Ascendancy. Although I guess we won't be able to make a Spirit right now. So we're not getting any value in case our opponent has another Binding. Opponent gets a land back. And another waking the trolls. Yeah, that's painful. So trolls versus spirits. Not loving my chances here. Now we can march for X equals 1 or 2 to get rid of a token just to kind of overpay and trigger ascendancy. Another Ascendancy. Now we maybe get both going at the same time. Play Ascendancy, end of turn we can flash back Gaze. Hit for two. And then the Flying Spirits may be able to outrace the Trolls. Opponent looking to maybe Field of Ruin as well. And yeah, definitely shows the importance of including a few basics in the deck. So they may have wanted to stack those triggers differently to get an extra troll. But yeah, it can be confusing. Alright, opponent's got four trolls, but we can answer a few of them. Fable's fine. We're still at 20, so we can take a bit of a hit. Get two spirits. And then... Probably want to land. Don't know if it matters what else I take, since we have a lot of X spells in hand already. So next turn I could Vanishing Verse, which is our 2-drop, and then... Let's say March X equals 2 as our 3 drop. So that's going to make 4 more spirits. And uh, yeah, hopefully that's enough to win the game. I guess we'll graveyard both. Take the land. Opponent can make us shuffle with Field of Ruin if they really wanted to. Also worth pointing out. And then... I don't think we want to make a move just yet, because if our opponent has another burn down the house, they may end up wiping the board, and I'm pretty sure we can kill them before they kill us with the trolls. Since this is 18 damage, so we're not in any immediate danger of dying. Opponent gets four more trolls. Alright, wildfire to run me out of basic lands. Luckily have a few left. But Field of Ruin and Rampage can kinda add on to that. Okay, opponent moves to combat, that's fine. I still think we wait to uh, kill anything, can block with our Professor on the Shaman, since these trample anyway. And then I would be taking 16 down to 4. So I guess what kills us is Meetung Massacre, killing all their trolls, which is a valid concern. Although how do we survive Massacre? Let's say I kill two of their trolls here at instant speed, I take 8 down to 12. Then I would survive if I only kill one, take 12 down to 8. 
then Meat Hook Massacre is not enough. All right, so I think we should exile one troll. To play it safe. Although things could get awkward if our opponent casts a sweeper using their treasure, because then we may not have a target for March. Right, opponent's gonna field the ruin. All right, at least this land comes into play untapped, so we can now march for x equals 3 if we really want to get rid of Reflection, although we still need to march for x equals 2 if we want to trigger Ascendancy. All right, there is Burnout the House, as expected. So yeah, that wipes the board. So I could exile Fable, or we can exile the Treasure Token to make two Spirit Tokens, which I think I prefer. So we can put them to two. And then maybe it's fine to Mascot Exhibition and keep multiple choice. If I multiple choice, then this goes up to four, but... You know, a board wipe gets us regardless. So maybe I'm better off keeping the multiple choice to also bounce Fable back once it transforms. Alright, and we got there. So the trolls did not get the job done, despite destroying quite a few of our lands and running us out of basics. So another Field of Ruin or a flashback Rampage could have been quite effective. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand seems quite promising. Can wait to play anything until we get our Ascendancy down. And then one drop, two drop. Take it from there. Slaughter Specialist. It's gonna apply quite a bit of pressure early. So just in case, I might want to play this on black so we can Vanishing Verse. And uh, not attacking. And then next turn, Pathway on blue, plays Ascendancy. Yeah, I mean, I could Vanishing Verse since we have a backup copy, and I assume we'll get more targets for it in the future. So, sure. And the Shakedown Heavy. Alright. Play Ascendancy. And Mono Black doesn't have a ton of ways to deal with enchantments. In recent sets, they've added a few more answers. Invoke Despair comes to mind. Purveyor, all right, so opponent's not messing around. A lot of huge creatures, and uh, we'll need as much interaction as possible. Do we let our opponent draw a card, or do we take six? Kind of think we let them draw a card. And then Vanishing Verse can hit Purveyor, can keep letting them draw cards with Heavy until we find an answer to it, and then take over with Ascendancy. So we can consider... make a Blood Token. March seems fine, even though their creatures are quite large. And then Taplands pass. Could also double block the Shakedown Heavy, potentially. And then Vanishing Verse hit Purveyor. Although they might have their own instant speed removal to blow up my double block. So Vanishing Verse now. Make a spirit, double block heavy. And then next turn, ideally we want to march something for two. Otherwise we can multiple choice. Our opponent does have the Infernal Grasp. So let's put it down. And a Trespasser. So that's three toughness. So March X equals three does not trigger Ascendancy. So that puts us in a bit of an awkward spot. Could always dig with our Blood Token to try and find something. Although outside of another Ascendancy, the main way we have of casting a three drop is 
by learning with professor or by casting something for x equals 2 and really want to keep this for x equals 4 to stabilize us next turn so I think that means digging with our blood token and can I get rid of the lands all right gaze can maybe find another ascendancy at least it prevents it from switching to knight as well all right there's another multiple choice so now I'm maybe more into the idea of casting multiple choice for x equals 2. And then that will trigger Ascendancy. And then the opponent can bounce a creature back. Trespasser can exile my gaze, unfortunately. And then probably want to stay back to maybe still block Hive, even though chances are pretty small and then our opponent can probably draw or we can take six now that we're at a healthier life total so we'll just uh, take six next turn multiple choice although maybe we still want to take a turn off casting March for three to kill trespasser get this up to four and then multiple choice for X equals four will be perfect yeah, I kind of like that more. So do it now so it doesn't switch to nighttime. X equals 3. Kill this. And then we'll have to discard a land to ward. So yeah, our opponent's getting some good value out of their creatures, but hopefully our ascendancy can take over now. So I'm not that interested in trading my spirits anymore. Although a double block on Trespasser is still quite profitable. So I guess we'll stay back. Hope there's no discard. If Trespasser attacks, it would be a little suspicious. Might mean they have another Infernal Grasp. And yeah, I think we don't let them draw. Just take six again. And then next turn we can start racing. And a Reckoner Raid will drain us for one. And an Underdog, okay. Yeah, lots of powerful rares out of the opponent's deck. But uh, we completed our Ascendancy, so let's see if that's going to be good enough. Meatho Massacre looks pretty good. And our opponent can bounce a creature back. And then, is it safe to hit them for 10 here? I think so. Still have three blockers back. And next turn, Massacre will finish them off if we don't kill them with our creatures first. Okay, this was a pretty awesome game. Lots of back and forth. Both decks got to do their thing. And yeah, Ascendancy, not the easiest card to get going, but the payoff is certainly there. So now the main concern is an opposing Meat Hook Massacre. Although they would also need a land. So I think we try and block the Shakedown Heavy as opposed to letting them draw. And then can block like so. And then we should have lethal here. And our opponent concedes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand is missing Ascendancy, but got everything else we need. And then we could Gaze. And then uh, flash it back later as another 1-drop. Lencher Shredder can be scary. Opponent may be on a blue-white aggro deck that plays a bunch of pump spells. We'll see. And then we'll uh, gaze end of turn as it digs a little deeper than consider here to find Ascendancy. Well, did not find Ascendancy, but still got some good value putting a Disturb and Flashback card in the graveyard. 
And then... Do we want to do anything right now? Could flashback gaze, could keep up vanishing verse. Want to avoid casting two spells in the same turn. But I don't think that'll be too much of an issue. Can just gaze and hang on to consider. And then next turn maybe disturb Danik, we'll see. Opponent also Asper Colors. Just taking one of Shredder, opponent not doing a whole lot. And uh, yeah, I think we graveyard everything. Just digging for Ascendancy. Can put an upkeep stop to Gaze again, or we can just disturb Danik. And yeah, we'll go for Danik. And then our plan is just to cast multiple choice x equals 4 a few times. Opponent bounces Denik back. So that's gonna come into our hand as a 2 drop again. Ledger Shredder connives, discarding Spell Pierce, which could have potentially hit our Ascendancy, also good against multiple choice. Take 3. Okay, so now could go for multiple choice x equals 4, or we can play a lifelinker and maybe keep vanishing verse as removal so we don't take too much damage here. Still want to try and hang on to consider, not only so we don't trigger shredder, but also in case we find ascendancy so we can enable it for one mana. Although Gaze could still get the job done. Opponent moves to combats. And we'll try to take out Shredder. If this gets spell pierced, then at least multiple choice resolves. Ooh, Test of Talents instead. Okay. Gets rid of our second copy of Vanishing Verse. But uh, glad this also didn't hit our multiple choice. They do get to take a look at our hand. So they'll see what's incoming. But for now we're still at a reasonable life total. Can maybe hit back with our life linker. And then multiple choice. I guess bouncing Vandal, not the best when they can replay at end of turn. Ooh, there we go. Obscura Ascendancy. And I'm not gonna waste any time. Play it, consider, plus Professor, get two spirits. I guess I get to trigger Shredder here, but that's fine. Maybe should have attacked first. Not give them the chance of drawing into a removal spell for Danik. Although they may be more worried about our flyers at this point. Another Professor... Doesn't seem super necessary. If we had the transformed Denik in play, we would have gotten a clue token from milling over a creature as well. So that's another neat little synergy. And then Professor wants to get a 3 mana play. Since our opponent's almost empty handed, it's not going to be teachings, but we can get either a prophecy. Or we could get reduced to memory. Kind of liking prophecy here. Okay, and then multiple choice can be our 4 drop and our 5 drop. Obscura Charm hits Danik. And uh, yeah, Obscura Charm luckily could not counter our enchantment, only instance of sorceries. Rafine can start conniving as well. So their creatures could get quite large. Also a nice combo with Fairy Vandal. Drawing a second card will put a counter on it, and then additional counters from Connive. So take six, or we can double block Vandal. Which does seem reasonable to be fair. 
opponent's got one card left. No instant speed removal. And step one, prophecy. And then thirst isn't bad. If we kick it, it sadly doesn't count as a four drop. It's still just one mana. But we can still multiple choice for X equals three. Make a four four. And a two two spirits. And then no attacks. But we'll have a couple spirit tokens to block their flyers. And next turn, multiple choice for X equals four. Should be a nice finisher. Opponents looking at Obscure Ascendancy, they know about multiple choice. So not sure what they can come up with here. Maybe something like a Void Rends to destroy your enchantments. Shredder attacks. We'll take it. And hope there's no Sweeper here. Something like a Meat Hook Massacre would be quite effective. And yeah, there's the Void Rent. Yeah, we jinxed ourselves here. So sadly, no leveled up Ascendancy. But our opponent is at 18, we can kill Rafine. We can multiple choice as well. Um, maybe should actually just kill the Ledger Shredder for one mana, and then multiple choice, so they don't get to connive. Alright, so could have had a huge army of 5-5 five, five spirits, but we're still in good shape. And then a Meat Hook Massacre isn't bad. Can also drain the opponent by killing our own creatures. Sure. They can bounce a creature. Don't have to pay the ward. Attack. And this will be close to lethal. Unless they've got a march to exile our token. Alright, opponent still at 10. And I think I hang on to tower, although... Then again, we do have a lot of ways to spend our mana here between Gaze, Denik, and a Professor which can learn. So it's probably fine to play out the land. Could Gaze on upkeep again. Or we can attack with a team, opponent takes at least 8, and then Massacre will finish them off. So a lot of ways we can do this. Can also just Blood Chief's Thirst now, and that'll get the job done. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and yeah, we've got a nice opening hand. Ascendancy with a nice curve to go with it. Up against Monorad, so we will be under quite a bit of pressure. But at least we will have targets for all these removal spells. May have to fire off like a Blood Chief's Thirst early on. That seems reasonable. Kill Goro Goro. And then we still have Gaze as a one drop to enable Ascendancy. So etching can be relevant when it comes to cards like Denik, which uh, require on creatures dying and not getting exiled. So that text can certainly be relevant. Fireblade Charger, that's okay. So we're not under a ton of pressure, so I think we can afford to get our Ascendancy online. Ooh, never mind. Battlecry Goblin. Now that's a card that can hit very hard indeed. So can I afford to Ascendancy? We drew another copy. So if I play Ascendancy now, next turn I could Ascendancy plus one drop make two spirits. Our opponent will have been able to attack us for a lot of damage and make some goblins. So not sure if those spirit tokens are going to be able to keep up. Versus just getting rid of the Battlecry Goblin now. And then next turn maybe getting the Ascendancy going. Yeah, I think this Battlecry is just a little too scary. So we'll get rid of it now. And then keep Vanishing Verse as our 2-drop. And hope they don't have another one. So this may just be Goblin Tribal. Goro Goro also a Goblin. So you could see the 
three mana goblin that pumps all authors. Nope. They might be holding some burn spells. Okay, so I can play Ascendancy and then maybe it's worth it to wait until we get another down. And then Gaze makes two spirits, Vanishing Verse, two more spirits. Uh -huh, a pair of goblins. Okay, that might change our decision here. And we may end up just having to make a spirit. And then Ascendancy can be our 3-drop to enable the first one. Yeah, another battle cry goblin. That's a lot of damage here. So... Everyone attacks, opponent gets another goblin. So I can either gaze and trade for battle cry, or we can ambush the 1-1 one -one goblin to keep our spirit around, and then Vanishing Verse deals with battle cry. Although if we gaze and trade off for battle cry, then I can keep Vanishing Verse for future battle cries or other lords pumping all goblins. So it's an interesting choice. I think I should keep my spirits, just so we have a little bit more to work with. And another Vanishing Verse looks good. Professor 2. Kind of like all these cards. So next turn or play, it's gonna be Vanishing Verse plus maybe Professor. And then we can maybe set up Ascendancy plus Thirsts as well. So yeah, submit zero, keep Professor on top and then Thirst next turn. And then we'll block the 1-1. One -one. Take quite a hit. But now hope to stabilize by playing Professor. And learning for... Could get a Sciences, which gains a bit of life. And then probably want a Vanishing Verse now before they get to untap. Okay. So hopefully this can keep us alive. And then next turn, Ascendancy into Thirsts. And then Sciences will be our 2-drop to enable the Author Ascendancy. And the second Ascendancy also enables the first. Opponents with an all-out attack. Okay, so we'll make some blocks here. They may have another pair of goblins. So is this fine? So then I'm unable to kill the Charger, otherwise that's going to uh, finish me off. So I may have two Sciences, which will throw off my curve. But if I block Charger now, then I would just be dead, because then I take three plus three more. Alright, no pair of goblins, that's good. But we may get burnt out anyways. Royal Eruption to the face. Alright, that's unfortunate. Yeah, we had the life gain to maybe stabilize and uh, take over. And yeah, we were very close to getting two Ascendancies going. But a very aggressive deck can certainly kill us before we manage to set up onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. No Ascendancy, but just a good curve. And some uh, solid creatures individually. So we're looking at a turn to Denik. Next turn, maybe Professor Tapland. Up against a green white. Innkeeper. Maybe a tokens or treasure deck. And then Professor may be able to learn for teachings. As we were on the play, so got fewer cards in hand. Opponents also playing blue. Alright, Innkeeper into another spell. May uh, turn off our teachings. Apparition. Exiles Denik. Pretty nice answer. Alright, so no teachings, but we can still multiple choice if we'd like. Or we can wait and then play it for x equals 4 to get more value. So slightly regretting my choice on which card to learn. And yeah, against an early innkeeper, it's certainly reasonable for the opponent to be able to empty their hand faster. The good news is that now they don't have as much mana to maybe play something big. But a Broker's Ascendancy is quite scary. March can exile it. Although do we want a multiple choice first? If I multiple choice, we bounce one of their creatures. 
make a 4-4 which can block. They get to replay their creature and then get the Ascendancy going again. So it's a close call. They would probably bounce an Innkeeper. Apparition would still trade for my token. So maybe I can afford to multiple choice to be more mana efficient. And then next turn we can march and then thirst seems fine. And by bouncing a creature back, it also becomes easier to set up teachings to draw again. So next turn we can go with thirst plus march for three. Another Ascendancy? Uh-oh. Alright, so now we may want to just kill all their creatures instead of focusing on Ascendancy. And yeah, with another Thirst, that's certainly feasible. So, I guess we can multiple choice again and Thirst, and then take it from there. They do get to keep Apparition, but we'll be able to deal with that later. So I guess we'll multiple choice first. Don't need Islands. Could also bounce her own professor back to maybe get a disenchant. Don't think that's quite where we're at. And pass it back. If our opponent comes up with a token maker, we're in trouble. Double ascendancy triggers. And another multiple choice. Yeah, that's certainly one way to do it. So we can kill Innkeeper and then bounce Apparition. Opponent maybe with a Wandering Emperor in response. How do we feel about that? Yeah, still wouldn't be able to Teachings if they have a Wandering Emperor. I could march for three Exile Apparition. And that's my entire turn. I think just going for multiple choice is better. And then if they want to keep Apparition and get rid of a token from Wandering Emperor, we can maybe finish off the Emperor as well. Meat Hook Massacre... I don't think it's gonna be great with double Ascendancy on the other side. Another March. And hit for 10. Opponent could Emperor exile one of my 4-4s. Four so do I just attack with Professor? Yeah, maybe we do since it did seem kind of obvious that they're holding one. And then March can also deal with a Samurai token. And yep, there's the Emperor. I've learned much during my and Ascendancy also adds loyalty to the Wandering Emperor, Guards, to me. which is another reason to prioritize trying to kill it. Opponent makes another Samurai. So we can exile both, and then we can finally Teachings. Sanctuary Warden, okay. That can draw quite a few cards as well. So may have to march the Warden instead of both tokens. So Ascendancy triggers. X equals zero, one of them. Opponent's got a 4-4 Samurai, and now March for 6 on the Warden deals with it cleanly. Can finish off Emperor and hit the opponent for a bunch. Probably the best we can do. And then to hang on to Tower or not. Opponent may be able to empty their hands. At which point I would rather cycle. Otherwise... Probably still fine to hang on to it, regardless. Might be a scenario where we draw another land and we get punished for holding it. This apparition only gets rid of Professor here. And decides to not exile anything. Consider. Okay, so now we probably play Tower and then Teachings. Find a professor that can find removal for something. Although, what would we find right now? Maybe just a mascot exhibition, actually. 
don't have the mana to reduce the memory since we decided to hold the land. Or we can go for Annihilation, but that's 5 mana. So we probably consider first, see if we find something cheap to remove the 6-6. Six, six. Hive, don't think is good enough since we already played a land. And the land is a draw. Okay, so I think we try and get in as much damage as we can. And then Professor for Mascot Exhibition, try and fly over and go wide to deal those last points of damage. Opponent can eat a 4-4, eat a 2-2, take 10 down to 6. And then we may be able to cross the finish line here, we'll see. And Mascot Exhibition. And hope to dodge any token makers. Another apparition probably now does get rid of Professor. Still nothing. Not sure whether declining here. Non-token permanence. Yeah. They could exile Professor if they wanted to. So, can Exhibition... And then still gaze as well, end of turn. Now a Meat Hook Massacre could close out the game as well. Put an upkeep stop to flashback, gaze. And our opponent explodes, so they must have drawn a couple lands in a row. And yeah, our initial strategy was to get rid of Ascendancy. Once they ran out a second copy, getting rid of all their creatures became our game plan, and I think it worked out. And then playing around Wandering Emperor also, to make sure they didn't get any value off of it. So yeah, didn't get to see our Ascendancy in action this game, but just back-to-back -back copies of multiple choice got the job done as well. So yeah, overall, quite satisfied with how this deck played out. I don't think it's necessarily going to be a very competitive deck, as uh, very aggressive decks, which are popular in best of one ranked, are quite good at punishing it if we don't have a very good draw, and then usually don't have the time to get our Ascendancy going. But in general, our deck was quite consistent at getting those five counters, which is not that easy, and sometimes requires you to play your spells in an unintuitive way, which may be throwing away a little bit of value here and there, but eventually the payoff of getting those five counters is worth it. So yeah, overall a fun deck to play in a casual setting, also a fun puzzle to solve every time you play it, and also a deck that can easily improve as more X spells are printed in standard. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.